My name is Josh Seaman and I am <laughs> so I have a singular honor of kicking off the speeches. Um, so I would like to start with uh, family and a lot of crying. When I was about 14, I went through confirmation of my mother's church. And we're all lined up at the front of the church and there are lots of people crying, a lot of them. And my very good friend Eric Worth walked out to the microphone. Everybody was getting confirmed how to give a short speech thing. The person who sponsored me through the, through the program. And he's about 15 feet away from everybody. My mother's standing behind. And this is one of those things you flash to. You know, you flash to other weddings and your weddings. But you, you flash to parallel moments. And this was one of them as I stood behind Jesse. So Eric goes out and gives a speech. And everybody is totally in a, a wash of tears. And uh, Eric talks for about 10 minutes. And then he starts walking back, and I prepare myself. I start walking forward. I pass him, and he turns to me. As as I turn to him, he says very quietly, "Beat that." <laughs> um, so I I had a flash to that specific moment when Ari went through her wonderful, wonderful letter to Jesse. And I, you know, you have you know, thought isn't linear. You don't have one thought and then another. You have many at the same time. And the the things I thought of were, oh boy, you gotta you gotta step up here, Jess. And <laughs> Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to follow something like that. Um, Jesse is the kind of person that knows knows what he wants, and he goes for it. He knows himself. Um, when he was very young, uh, as as many of the wedding party learned, uh, he had a nice nickname, the refrigerator, as a baby, and he, he wanted to eat construction paper, so he ate construction paper. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he wanted desperately to watch The Wizard of Oz every morning, so he watched The Wizard of Oz every morning for an entire year. Um, but he, he knew at an early age who he was uh, and created his own identity. He became a high school student and, to the best of my descriptive abilities, became a boy band member. Uh, <laughs> there was short hair and gel and then color shirts. Um, there was dancing on stage, singing a cappella. There was swooning. Um, many, many things related to that category of behavior. And then he decided he wanted to do something different. He went off to the wonderful world of Southern California, and again, to the best of my descriptive abilities, became the opposite of a boy band member. You can see this evolution, and if you haven't seen it already, many of you have, but if you haven't, you have a wonderful sense of what it is through the absolutely glorious arch, two arches of photos and uh, writings that they've posted about each other. You can, you, you can see that transformation, and then again, he graduates and decides he knows what he wants and he's going to become a professional, and he is well on his way to become a professional. But the arc, the common arc, the common thread through all of that um, has been airy. The best decision he's ever made and the one that truly shows that he knows what he wants. And I couldn't be prouder to call you my brother and now airy you as my sister. Care of baby someday. 
joking aside, um, there was a moment in our sisterhood, probably while sitting curled up together on the edge of the bed on Oak Knoll, when I looked at my little sister and the only other expert on earth, on the whole little world of my family, the only other person that got this little world, suddenly it hit me that here was a full person in front of me, somebody that actually knew about the great big world outside of my family also. Um, and that could teach me a whole lot about that world too. So um, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about what, what I've learned from her. Um, although my sister has so seamlessly entered this world of adulthood, together with Jesse, she still manages to live in the present. And quite fully, they manage to do that together. Um, if you spend some time with them, then you've recognized this magical energy in Ari and Jesse. An energy for seizing life, however big or small, its adventures. And as I approach 30, I see how for the majority of people, this idea of leisure time becomes more and more obsolete. Um, but for Ari and Jesse, they might be caught playing with a six-week-old kitten after work, um, maybe singing and strumming an original song while recording themselves on their laptop, making roasted garlic spread and homemade potato chips, or maybe they're caught drinking wine on the porch with their neighbors twice their age. So it's not just that they know how to celebrate together. Ari and Jesse know how to include others in their fun. Their ability to build community was apparent from the moment they moved to Boston. It was apparent through urban family dinners, in Alston, and it was apparent when, on my first visit to their new neighborhood in Jamaica Plain, um, we had to stop by the broker office so Ari could give her broker a hug and say hi to his girlfriend. Um, that was followed by a visit to their cooperative bank so I could learn about those, and then a visit to the cooperative grocery store, um, followed by a breakdown of all of the local community orgs that they would become active in in Jamaica Plain. So, from an early age, my sister has seemed to really balance living with drive and purpose, um, and also being open to the jolts and shifts that new learning brings. Um, Jeff, Aries' open mind led her down a path committed to social justice, and she lived this commitment to justice in her work with women and teens, and also through her union with Jesse. Ari lives a commitment to intentionality now with Jesse by her side. And Jesse's pure commitment to living his life deliberately, not by default, not by happenstance, but with true intention is more than one could wish for their sister's partner. Um, Jesse interrogates the world around him. Whether it's energy policy or a Bob Dylan song, Jesse is an investigator, an explorer of both the concrete and the abstract, and I know that he will always challenge whatever boundaries may present themselves, either for him and Ari or for the world around them. And um, it turns out that I actually knew Jesse as a fellow student many years ago in Amherst Regional High School. <laughs> Um, Jesse was a mere little ninth grader, I was a senior, and um, every day I would sit across from this student in Chinese class, <laughs> and sometimes he was that student that you just wish he would put his hand down, <laughs> and uh, most of the time, Jesse asked those questions that once they were answered by Miss Sue, you suddenly felt you had cracked the code of the language because Jesse had just asked the perfect question. And um, I just have this really clear memory of one day with my best friend, Chessie, and who's also in the class, and we were, we were saying, oh, hey, yeah, Jesse Seaman was absent today, and we were talking about how boring it was, and also how we all just learned a lot less because Jesse wasn't there to ask a good question. <laughs> Great deal from my little baby sister, Erie, but also from her partner and 
from what they have together. And here's to Ari and Jesse.
while you were sleeping. <laughs> and after you told me that story, you told me that you were really falling in love with him. And Jesse, I have very vivid memories of conversations over the phone between Redlands and Amherst and talking about this transition into college and despite all these changes that were going on, that Ari remained your soulmate. And no matter what, you had this faith that you and Ari would find each other in the future. Although many consider marriage to be a pretty big step, I think we can all say here that you and Jesse have been loving and committed partners since the day I can remember. Um, Ari, you trusted your heart and were certain of your love for Jesse long before we could even legally drive. <laughs> you, you surrendered to the mysterious power of trust and faith in your love for Jesse while we crammed for AP exams, while we cheered Jesse on Ultimate Games, and while we applied to college. And despite the obstacles, you always remained true to yourself, true to your heart, and always trusting that a future together existed. In fact, I want to share with you guys, a few months ago, I was going through some boxes and I found a note. We've shared a lot of notes together over the years, a lot having to do with Jesse. Um, and it was a note written in 2003 between Courtney and I, and I have it right here. And I want to read it to you guys. Okay? We will read it together. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> holding hands after B period? <laughs> yes, they are definitely going to get married one day. I know! <laughs> so I will hand this note over to you after I've kept it for about eight years now. <laughs> um, another memory I wanted to share was Last week, I was visiting Ari and Jesse in Boston, and Ari came over and whispered to me, Jesse and I are just loving each other so much these days. <laughs> and although it's impossible not to see how in love these two are, Ari, it was your choice of words that really stood out to me. You both actively love with intention and compassion. And although you found your love for one another nearly a decade ago, um, you have never stopped nurturing that love. Um, I have one other quote from a note I want to share, and this one wasn't between Courtney and I, this one was actually between Ari and Jesse um, that Ari shared with me, and the quote is, um, Jesse, you are such a constant in my life, and I know you will be forever. I always look into the future, and I see you and me. I am just so curious to see us living our lives all grown up and still soulmates, of course. That was also written in 2003. Um, yeah. So, I just want to end on a note by saying that, Ari, I have never ever seen you as happy, as complete, and as inspired as you are with Jesse. And Jesse, I have never seen you as calm, as happy, and as confident as you are with Ari. And Ari, you know I'm pretty protective of you. <laughs> and only want the best for you, um, Jesse's the best. Aww. And Jesse, I cannot imagine anybody better than Ari for you. I love you both.
And I've been doing that for about 30 years. And in that time, I've become sadly cynical, very disappointed, and very unhappy. It's sad, but it's true. There's a generation of children that expect the world to come to them. And I despair. However, thank God, there is a population of, of, of what I call children that give me hope. Josh, Jesse, Kendra, Ariel, Katie, et al. <laughs> Caleb, sorry, sometime in the future. Give me hope. These are people who will, most of us, will depending on them for, their, for our futures, for the decisions and the governance and the laws that govern our future. And for them, it gives me tremendous hope. Because I know that these guys and this generation of people have our interests as older people sincerely at heart. And it gives me great strength and courage. So if you're in that age range, <laughs> mazel tov. <laughs> And remember me when you're in front of whoever the decision making companies are and think kindly on us. But for you, I say now, muzzle top. Hello, everybody. Can we give a hand for Leah Rothow and her speech earlier? <laughs> How's everyone doing out there? Do you all know each other? Do you all get to know each other? Because at my table we played icebreaker games. And I was um, somewhat adverse to this at first, but I warmed into it. So I'm going to do a little icebreaker with the whole group. Is that okay, guys? Yeah. All right. Favorite word. Does anyone have a favorite word? Yeah. Oh my god, I can't Don hear it. I heard John, Don Cheadle is a name and it is two words. That is a fail. Epic fail. I heard squishy. That's weird. Squishy. So can I get Jesse and Ariel? Can I get each from each of you a favorite word, please? <laughs> my my hearing is terrible. I have no idea. Gibberish. Gibberish. Schnookums. That's Jesse for you. Schnookums. My favorite word, sincerely. Uh, kind of sappy, awful word, right? Maybe I'm a sappy, awful guy. But can I, will you, will you guys bear with me for a second while I tell you the meaning behind the word sincerely? Yes? Yes. All right. Sincerely is a Latin word. I studied Latin earlier. Max asked me why I studied Latin. I told him because it taught you the meaning of many words. Sincerely is a story. In Roman times, they would make massive bronze sculptures. And from the first casting of the bronze, the sculpture would go to the palace. The second casting, which was almost perfect, would go to the temple. And then after that, they'd use these same massive, beautiful molds for rich men and women would buy these sculptures. But after the first few castings, there would be pits and grooves in the sculptures that would come out of them. They would become, like a Xerox, they would become progressively less and less perfect. So what they would do in order to keep those sculptures saleable is that they would take colored wax and they would fill in the cracks and grooves. Now the word for wax in Latin is cara, and sine, for Spanish speakers, means without. So sine cara means without wax. Sincerely means something that has not been affected has not been adulterated, has not been sold short, is honest. 
This has been my favorite word for ever since junior high school, and I always wondered why it's a great story, but I think that it's because my best friend is a sincere person. There are very few people who are sincere people, people who are not affected, people who say what they mean when they mean it, and sometimes that means saying something that is unpopular, sometimes that means saying not exactly what you want to hear, but saying what you should hear. Having a friend like that has been invaluable for me because I'm not always a sincere person. Uh, Jesse has taught me that if you say what you mean and be who you actually feel yourself to be, you get what you want. And tonight we saw Jesse really get what he wants. <laughs> so please, we all raise a glass to Jesse. Sincerely.
truly painted such a unique and special bond that you would have to be a serious cynic to not fester a belief that they were made for one another. So, with the assurance that this was a serious soulmate situation, and a crew of other romantic ladies by my side, we went in to make our case. Ari needed to confess her love. On my watch, Ariel sat in an internet cafe in Cape Town, South Africa, to type the words that led her back to her first love. We briefly didn't know what would happen, but soon enough, they were back on, and here we are today. I have been lucky enough to spend numerous occasions with the two of them since they have reunited. I will never forget the first embrace Jesse and I had. He did not harbor any ill feelings about Ari and my previous engagement. Um, instead, he smiled wide, opened his arms, and welcomed me to Ithaca, just as, just as he and Ari have welcomed me to every home they've lived in together. Ari and Jesse always make room for others in their community. They honor each other's communities deeply. I'm sure everyone here has felt that energy. I have such a deep admiration for both Ari and Jesse. They are brave, beautiful, loving people who care so deeply about the world while maintaining such a clear, stable commitment to each other. So, I don't have a drink, but please join me in a toast to their epic, everlasting, always enduring love. Woo!